اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور سل إماما عاش في العلم دهورا ودهور يطلب العلم ببذل حتى ضمته البحور سل إماما عاش في العلم دهورا ودهور يطلب العلم ببذل حتى ضمته البحور صابرا في العلم صبرا حتى سموه الصبور يخرج العلم بفأل مثل ريحان الزهور صابرا في العلم صبرا حتى سموه الصبور يخرج العلم بفأل مثل ريحان الزهور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور كن إذا سموك اسما لتكن مثل الحضور كن رفيقا كن عظيما كن كما تلك الصقور كن إذا سموك اسما لتكن مثل الحضور كن رفيقا كن عظيما كن كما تلك الصقور واقيا بالعلم نحو النجم مزدان شكور رافضا كل التدني رافضا نفس الغرور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور ابن مسعود فقيه عالم أحيا القفور فإذا أعطاك رأيا كان سهما في النحور ابن مسعود فقيه عالم أحيا القفور فإذا أعطاك رأيا كان سهما في النحور وعلي ثم بالدين معاذ لا يبور اقرأ التاريخ تروي عنه أفواه سطور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور إن سألت عن إمام أو فقيه في الأمور ابن عباس ترنم وسيبقى في الصدور إن سألت عن إمام أو فقيه في الأمور ابن عباس ترنم وسيبقى في الصدور فهو كالشمعة تذهب حتى تأتين بنور ساهرا بالليل علم وبأوقات سحور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور إذ بكى النبي يوما سمعا صوتا جهور يا أبي كم روت عنك الليالي والعصور إذ بكى النبي يوما سمعا صوتا جهور يا أبي كم روت عنك الليالي والعصور أنتم اليوم كنبت قد على فوق الجذور يا أساس الدين يا صرحنا يا صلب صخور اطلب العلم أخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, Welcome to Islamic Voices Live uh, uh, again, today uh, we have, uh, as many of you know already, uh, uh, someone that is not a stranger to Islamic Oasis or to uh, these uh, live discussions. Uh, we have, uh, alhamdulillah, Dr. Abu Talha uh, back with us. Uh, as you all know, Dr. Abu Talha uh, is a professor, uh, is an author, uh, also lecturer, and he is an IT professional, a uh, PhD in, uh, in his field. Uh, he has written many articles. He's, uh, He's discussed as an intellectual, uh, as, uh, someone that knows the Islamic system in and out, someone who has given lectures, talks on the Islamic system uh, and the need for Islam, not only here in the U.S., uh, but across the world, alhamdulillah, in many different parts of the world. So, inshallah, brothers and sisters, today the, dis uh, the, dis the, the, the discussion is on a very important topic, and that topic is discrimination. 
inshallah we'll delve into it uh, we'll discuss it from uh, as many perspectives as we can uh, to understand this why do human beings behave the way they do what makes them uh, act this way or that how do we decide uh, what what good or what's bad for us because obviously discrimination seems to be in some ways an uh, instinctual thing but how do we manage our instincts uh, and to discuss all of these things inshallah we have dr abu talha dr abu talha welcome to islamic voices Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brother. Thank you for uh, having me again in uh, your discussions. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, glad to be here. Uh, uh, although the time difference between you and me is about nine hours, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we'll try to make it, inshallah, as much as we can. Subhanallah. Uh, uh, but uh, let me begin uh, with this. Uh, we uh, The topic we are addressing today is the discrimination, uh, which comes in many different forms. Uh, of course, the uh, worst of all is the discrimination based on the color. Uh, the other discrimination is based on gender. Uh, other discrimination is based on your ethnicity, whether you are uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon, whether you are German, whether you are African, Asian, uh, etc. And the worst of all, of course, is the discrimination based on uh, uh, how much money you have or you don't have, what they call it between the have and the have not. Uh, and uh, in between, there are many uh, uh, different types of discriminations, which eventually had led to the uh, uh, almost uh, I would call it a divide or the multi-divide uh, between people. Now, today we have the divide between people who, are, who have education, people who don't have education, people who can get health care, people who don't get health care, uh, etc., etc. Uh, and there have been so many organizations uh, that exist in the world uh, who are trying to fight uh, or uh, work against all types of discriminations. Uh, you have many uh, feminist organizations to protect the rights of women, uh, many black organizations to protect the rights of black, and then eventually probably the best thing is to get some uh, ways there, but not being in fruit, the, the essence or the, uh, the cause or the uh, uh, this type of behavior, as you mentioned, about uh, the discrimination. Uh, and eventually, this has come to discrimination among nations, uh, which is uh, the world today is officially divided, and there is a divide uh, in the world between the, let's say, the countries which belong to NATO, countries which do not belong to NATO, and there you have a, a war going on in the world, one of the worst current wars, which uh, um, could amount to a, to a third world uh, war, because actually um, most of the countries in the world are involved in this war, uh, either by supporting Ukraine, giving them uh, weapons, telling them uh, stand still, we give you money, just war the Russia, uh, fight the Russians. Many, uh, uh, some, not so many, uh, stand on the side of uh, Russia and support it and so on so it's a it's really a third world war and why me, because there is a fair, there is a, a divide among nations go ahead uh, uh, i want to we're going to discuss this in detail but Abu Talha, i'm sure you are watching you're very close to germany uh, at this point and i'm sure you're hearing what's happening in germany um, yes and yes. I, I i i think uh the discussion of discrimination also i mean obviously it has a lot to do with what's happening in in nations and, and, and why people become so angry that they even are willing to go as far as doing a coup d'etat against a system that they are living in. Uh, Sheikh, what, what, what are you observing, just being there, and I will go on with the topic, but any observations, quick uh, things that pop up in your mind and what's happening in Germany? Oh, uh, Germany probably had witnessed one of the worst type of uh, international uh, or nation-based uh, or ethnic-based discrimination in the world 
uh, two wall, uh, very large wall yes, walls, interesting. Uh, first Mashallah, and second. Yeah. Uh, they were motivated uh, by the supremacy of the not only the the white race but the German in particular, and that's why their their uh, uh, discrimination and trying to put down the Jews and uh, uh, exter uh, 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 exterminate them or kick them out or evict them out of Germany and then put the nations as a ladder which nations come at the top of the ladder and the lower of the ladder and those who are at the lower of the ladder should uh, uh, should be removed out of this uh, world so Germany is very famous for discrimination and the the roots of the German discrimination had resulted in the uh, Nazi type of uh, behavior uh, and uh, of course today this very group the Nazis or the far right they are trying to uh, take over the government or at least that's what's being claimed and the uh, German forces trying to stop that but nevertheless it shows that this uh, very uh, uh, discriminatory type of groups continue to exist the uh, in uh, in America uh, we still have the same groups in fact the Trump era has uh, reached the peak of discrimination uh, in which they provoked uh, the uh, almost almost a fight between the whites and the blacks between the uh, uh, certain groups of people who really are very uh, racist uh, so it's not only Germany it's uh, Germany it's America it's uh, France uh, it's Britain it's Denmark uh, all over uh, and that leads us to the root where the heck does this come from I mean where is where all this issue because discrimination in in, in a very in a nutshell it says I am better than you uh, I have more rights than you do. Why? I can find reasons. I look better than you. You are dark. I am white. I have money. You don't have money. I, I am healthy. You are absolutely uh, unhealthy. I have good education. You don't have education. It comes in many different forms. But that's the question is, where did this come from? Uh, how did this come up within the uh, uh, this human uh, human race? Uh, Sheikh, uh, you know, I uh, we were discussing this thing, and you know, we were saying that okay, I mean, I, it, it's, it's a thought, but you can correct us uh, if we're wrong. Uh, discrimination is an instinctual issue, is it not? It is, is, is it first of all, is it instinctual? Is it something that you find it's part of human nature, and that uh, so it, it's going to exist, and then it needs guidance or uh, other ideas something that can actually uh, that can maintain or or, or uh, guide that instinct is that a good idea is that a thought is that a, an understanding uh, yeah well uh, yes and no it is instinctual in the sense that it does not include a very uh, deep thoughtful process uh, it's a response to an instinct but human by instinct is not racist by instinct mm. because if we say by instinct or by nature human is uh, racist it actually means that uh, we claim that Allah Azawajal created the people with this type uh, racist uh, ra racist racistability let me call it <laughs> uh, or discriminatory type of uh, behavior which is absolutely not true Allah Azawajal did not create people to be uh, racist. Uh, that's not part of the human nature. That is part of the behavior that humans, or many humans, not all, have selected to observe because uh, uh, to them, uh, this type of behavior can give them more privilege hmm. uh, to be sustained, more uh, privilege to be uh, superior more pri privileged to uh, to have more uh, resources so in fact let me uh, show that uh, uh, current behavior based on ideologies 
uh, take capitalism for example which is now the most widespread uh, ideology that exists in the world uh, by the capitalism indicates according to uh, adam smith that the resources in the world are not sufficient mm. and uh, people the needs of the people are more than the resources that exist and therefore the people have to fight to get more resources faster and more to protect their life in a response to the instinct of survival so instead of saying for the instinct of survival we should survive we should all of us survive all of us uh, get distribute whatever resources we have among the people who exist they say you have to fight for these resources that's the essence of adam smith ideology he says that look if you are 10 people uh, who, who need let's say to eat and there are only six uh, pieces or loaves of bread and each individual needs one loaf to survive then definitely these six people are going to fight and the one who get more will try to restrict others from getting resources because uh, it's my life it's survival so the response to survival there are different ways of response to survival one way is to uh, collaborate and to make sure that the wealth is distributed in in a manner that's absolutely acceptable for all humans or even to reject this idea of smith and say listen the world the earth by itself above and below and on the surface has more resources than the people need and we know that in america and in, in europe they throw lots of food in the ocean so that the prices do not uh, plunge in uh, and become uh, the products become cheap to protect the rights of the capitalists and the owners or the feudals who own the land and this is a fact the corn the rice the wheat that they throw in the oceans in the every year every year the money the governments pay to farmers mm. not to Subsidies. plant their lands to keep it absolutely unplanted so that to 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 keep the prices uh, up so that it becomes to the benefit of the owners big owners that's not a human nature that is something humans created and they violated the very essence of the rules that allah Azza wa Jal gave uh, in this world and how he created things he allah Azza wa Jal created uh, resources in the world way above and beyond what the people need and that's uh, Allah says, He made available to you whatever in the heavens, in the skies, in the in the in the in the, in the, in the outer space, and on earth, and above the earth. Uh, so that's really the essence of this whole issue of discrimin of discrimination is the response to this uh, to the instinct, not the instinct itself. So the, by instinct, you don't need, you don't have to be. Uh, discriminatory or to discriminate against uh, against others but now the this behavior is controlled by some ideas and thoughts that some weird person somewhere in the world he just came up with an idea he says look uh, there are a few pieces of bread around there mm -hmm. so run fast who can run faster he can get more be stronger fight the others stop the others from getting that bread you will eat it all and that's what's happening. This is why we have trillionaires in the world. What the heck is a trillionaire? You know, th this is really, it, it's nuts. This goes uh, banana. This is crazy. A trillionaire means he can uh, uh, spend one million dollars a day. A day, not a year. A day. And he will survive for 2,530 years before he can spend all that money. Yeah. Are you kidding me? This is what a trillionaire. And a trillionaire, when you have 10 or 15 or hundreds of them, and that's probably the, the, the number of trillionaires, uh, they have more than 90% of the wealth of the entire world. So where is this Adam Smith uh, uh, idea? That's absolutely ridiculous. That is the cause of all discriminatory today. Today. All of these, in fact, of course, there was a discrimination against uh, in color white versus black but that discrimination 
led to the fact that the, there is a certain group of people of color, let's say the African Americans in America, uh, blacks in general uh, in the world, they are paid less money on their uh, services. They are made somehow to be away from the, the lucrative jobs. So eventually, all of this discrimination, they uh, uh, they are being uh, almost wrapped in one very, uh, very uh, ugly type of discrimination is how much money you have. Because if you have more than me, you can make me sick which means I'm not able to go to, to health places. You can make me run for to be on drugs so that I can forget all my uh, my problems. Or I go for drugs to get cheap money fast and then go to jail faster. So you really destroy whole nations because of this very fact that you uh, allow people to be uh, at disadvantage, uh, don't have enough wealth, and then you divide the world now. First of all, the ones who uh, gain more money than others and so on and so forth. Sheikh, uh, just a question here. Uh, going back to what we were talking about, the idea of nation states, uh, right? I mean, mm. if you think about nation states, you think about nationalism, how uh, connected is this to uh, racism oh. uh, or discrimination? I mean, is this a need in capitalism, Sheikh? I mean, is it by... Uh, le- if you can answer that first one too, but with, with this, just so I don't forget my thought here. Sheikh, uh, uh, he, obviously it's uh, human beings that are coming up with this, uh, at least capitalism and ideologies like uh, capitalism and communism. Why why the, the need to discriminate? Sheikh? Why can't we just live? Well, okay, uh, everybody has their fill and uh, let's let's move on why the need to discriminate and to have more is it greed and I, is that also part of this discrimination yeah, yeah this uh, because what's what's really greed at the end of the day greed at the end of the day is the uh, lust to gain more and more power more and more of course money and wealth uh, is means to get to getting power. That's what greed is about. Now, why would there be greed? Because someone, uh, I would uh, I would call this someone is really in has inhumane type of ideas. He said uh, people look uh, the wealth that exists around the wealth now in terms of food, in terms of medicine, in terms of education, in terms of whatever is not sufficient for all. So you better get it first. You better use whatever means you have to be able to sustain your own survival, your own life. If you don't do that, you will vanish. Mm. And that's a crazy idea. That's absolutely irresponsible idea, which uh, causes the people, motivates the people to be very greedy, to greedy means to obtain as much as I can at the smallest amount of within the smallest amount of time period. Uh, whether I leave people behind me dead or not is irrelevant. And then eventually this greed becomes a behavior, uh, a common behavior within certain societies. And that is what eventually it comes to the level of states because the states are run by people of the same ideas and the same thought. These states like in America, in Germany, in Britain, in France, in the, uh, mainly the Western world, they are run by the people who believe in these ideas, who believed them when they were children. They were taught about those when they were children. And there is an irony, sometimes uh, in, in school, especially kindergartens, they try to teach the kids to, uh, to share and even that share, there is embedded discriminatory factor there. It means that you, my uh, beloved son, uh, you are much more uh, fortunate than others. And why don't you share your toy with the, that little kid who doesn't have? But they never tell the, these kids, why is it that some people have and don't have? And what's the difference? Why is it that we can get everything we need? And then they say, okay, please share your toy with uh, 
with, with the others. The, the idea is there should have been enough toys to go around so that why I, am I, I am deprived? So that deprivation, which means I accept the fact that you can be deprived. I accept the fact that you can always be poor. I accept the fact that I'm richer than you are and I'm too kind becoming rich that I can share part of my food with you within a certain charity organizations. All of these things that we see, charity, why charity organizations? Why do I have to go to a, a soup kitchen so I can eat and feed my children in soup kitchens? Why? Why is it that some people, uh, the other day I was driving in a place in, in Jordan and I moved from one sector to another sector. One sector has all of these villas, all of these uh, clean streets, all of these uh, trees planted in the in the middle of the uh, uh, across or on the side of the roads, and immediately the second sector roads are uh, absolutely rough and you barely can drive on them. Houses are run down, and then a very uh, large crowd of people all over looking. Everybody is looking for something he or she cannot have. Uh, the same thing, uh, uh, go in Chicago, drive in your car between uh, going on uh, from uh, west to eastern side of the uh, southern part while you are driving, immediately you start going into rundown houses, into uh, houses which are absolutely de deserted. People who are wandering on the streets looking for uh, something to eat or to, to, uh, uh, to live by. Uh, it is absolutely awful. That's not part of the human nature. And I will come to a point which I really, uh, uh, once we get this now, all of this becomes at the beginning individuals, people who live this way, eventually some people who are absolutely rich, they get to be elected as parliament members. This time the latest elections in, the, in, in America uh, for the uh, mid-term uh, elections. Uh, they said the the amount of money spent, the billions of dollars, is more than any other elections in the past, whether presidential or Congress uh, elections. Uh, meaning what? Meaning the ones who were elected are the richest, are all the ones who, who are access to the very rich people. Uh, if you want to run to become a congressman somewhere, the fact that you understand and you are educated and you have ideas and thoughts and you care about the people is not sufficient to make you uh, to make you reach uh, that position who reach the position the one who can spend the most in these elections the one who has the the, the most powerful uh, uh, already he gained power already he had, he had gained the money so he can rule over you so he can make the the rules and the legislations he make them on your behalf uh, why the Congress in America has not been able to pass the law uh, regarding the rifle associations or the, the weapon ownership. And almost on a daily basis, there are crimes. Why? Because someone has access to, uh, to weapons and he thinks he can kill the people because uh, he's better, he's more superior, he can do whatever he or she wants. No Congress session had ever been able to pass a bill uh, for, to regulate the use of, uh, of guns in a manner to stop the, 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 the violence and the crimes. Why? Because the Rifle Association uh, uh, lobby uh, has uh, funded enough Congress people and senators in the Congress so to, to, to reject and to stop and to block all of these uh, legislations. Why? The, uh, it took so many years before uh, Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, abandoned or uh, the, the, the uh, discriminatory laws which allowed them, allowed the officially the government to segregate between blacks and whites. The University uh, of Mississippi in Oxford, they call it Ole Miss. In fact, this is really... It, it's a crazy and look, I'm giving some situations today. Some people, they think, oh, we are moving away from this discrimination. No, not really. Until today, the university in which uh, uh, two 
black students, the first black students who were ever allowed to the University of Mississippi in Oxford, uh, uh, in the in Oxford, the uh, city in Mississippi, Mississippi, they were allowed back in the six, just yesterday in the sixties. Sixties, uh, I was born much more earlier than sixties, which means I I I witnessed that era. Uh, one of them was hanged inside the university, in the campus, in campus. And that law, which was passed, that okay, now we can stop, we can allow black people to come to, to the university and to to study. It was until the early sixties they were not allowed. No, no person of black color can enter, can access the university. And when they did, when the the Congress passed a law at the time under the pressure, under the communist pressure, by the way. Not because of the people and the nature and the goodness of the people, but under the communist pressure, there are many communist parties, nationalists uh, within the uh, state. They said, okay, let's allow these quote unquote blacks get in the university. And as soon as they got there, the students they had, just like the, uh, uh, what they call the snatch type of uh, activity, which was, which was very common back in the 60s and 50s and 40s. One of them was hung in, uh, in in the in the in the center of the campus. That act is not too long ago. South Africa, the the uh, discrim discriminatory laws and the apartheid, they, they they give they give them names. Sometimes, if I am a new person coming in the world and someone tells me there is apartheid in Palestine where the Jewish state is uh, running the uh, the show there, there was apartheid. I wouldn't even know what does that mean. You need to be highly educated to understand what's apartheid. But you should have Abdul, said. Here's the thing, though. Abdul, I, I do understand, and I'm gonna come back to apartheid. But he, what happens? I mean, for instance, in Rwanda, and uh, uh, it was blacks who killed blacks. Well, not that's not true. That's uh, not true. Blacks did not kill blacks. It was the interest based to groups because of this issue of, uh, let me call it nation slavery where the uh, western powers they are competing for the land and for the resources in rwanda and in uh, the middle of africa and uh, all of africa for the gold for the woods for the uh, uh, resources they have and then they were able to inject these ideas of hatred and uh, uh, fights between the Zolo on one side and the other tribes or the, or even within the Zolo them, them, themselves uh, so that they killed each other and that's not that's not very difficult for the uh, uh, US led forces and the British led forces or France or Germany or uh, even Spain or those countries that have colonized that area and they really have subjugated these people to all types of imperialistic uh, uh, acts uh, and then uh, they got these people to fight one another and that's what's happening in Yemen you'll tell me why do people in Yemen fight each other why in Syria well who who creates the essence of these revolutions they put someone on power the the CIA or the MI6 they recruit someone cheap personality cheap uh, uh, individual who can sell his own nations for a few bucks that he gets from the uh, Western powers. And with that, now he starts subjugating his own nation for all types of discriminations between uh, uh, Palestinians, uh, Jordanians, between uh, some people in Egypt and the other types of uh, people. They, they, they create all, they control. See, this is the issue of the control of nations, just like and that's not what I am saying or claiming. Look at the book written by Miles Copeland, Game of Nations. There is, they run the scenarios on what is the best way to control people in Africa or in Asia or in the Middle East or in Pakistan or Bangladesh or uh, India, wherever. They find all types of uh, ways to inject into these people. And then they say, look, oh, the blacks killed one another. Blacks don't kill one another. That's absolutely wrong idea not even in africa it's not blacks who killed one another it's 
Western power killed both killed both blacks in Rwanda with guns handed to these guys. I fund one group with another group. I uh, arm this group, the other group. Then I inject the ideas that in order for you to be in power, to be good, you have to uh, to exterminate uh, the others. No, uh... Because before before this all type of Western dominance in the world, we did not have these uh, type of wars. There were wars all the time, but they were limited in nature, and they have all types of different reasons. Uh, I'm not saying that the wars are only happening in the uh, 19th and 20th century. They did happen before, and there were uh, many of them. There were different reasons, and there were all types ways to stop that war and to uh, uh, and to generate peace and live in peace and harmony so here's the thing Abdullah. so now uh, obviously all of this is happening uh, discrimination is taking place human beings are tired of it uh, let's say they come up with something called communism uh, to stop the discrimination between have and have nots uh, and then they come and then uh, they they don't really do much better. Uh, Stalin comes and cl- kills uh, six seven million people, uh, destroys Central Asia, destroys resources. So, Sheikh, I mean, so that that's. I guess what I'm getting to is that w- what stops this on its tracks, even though human beings as human beings are trying. Uh, I guess they're saying, well, the whole communist block came together saying okay look we got to stop this nonsense and then we go back to 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 page a again i guess first page so why why why, i guess what i'm asking is why are we in this circle all the time what are we missing and where do we need to go okay i like this uh, page one or page a or starting point (laughs) Uh, what is that page a what is that starting point uh, let me be uh, a bit more uh, uh, biased towards my ideas and my beliefs uh, because uh, uh, bias is towards the truth is not really harmful. To be biased towards the truth is always good. But is that discrimination? Uh, final... before, you go, before you go any further, can somebody come and say you are discriminating? Uh, there is a difference between discriminate and bias. Bias means to be on uh, on the side of an idea or a thought or behavior. So if that thought or idea or behavior proves to be uh, correct and useful and uh, genuine, then that is a, a positive value. Uh, if that bias turns out to be based on uh, uh, a current uh, emotional feeling and uh, based on uh, a wrong idea or concept, no, no that bias is absolutely uh, unacceptable. So now when I say now I am biased towards the idea and thought I have about the, uh, the origin of the universe and the origin of humans, uh, with careful thought about all of these uh, issues, I find out at the end of the day, I have not come into this life with my own will. The world did not come into existence on its own. There is a creator and a sustainer to this world. And then eventually there is, we all are created beings. And the created beings, uh, the creator indicates that you are created equal with all equal uh, uh, instincts, equal... uh, uh, emotions equal ability to think uh, and equal uh, ability to respond to your creator in a positive way. Uh, he did not create this discriminatory nature in us. And in uh, uh, in the hadith, the statements of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, "Kullukum li Adam wa Adam min turab." Uh, all of you belong to one person who is Adam, and then eventually Adam is coming from soil. So no one is different than the others. In another place, he says, there should not be any difference between people based on their 
how they look or where they come from or what they have or they have not uh, the only way to to uh, sort people out is in the manner they respond to their creator and this creator doesn't have any bias towards anyone because he created all now when Allah created the human Adam uh, who had now uh, a role and objective uh, in this world to be the viceroy, to be the responsible for the resources and uh, utilizing the resources of this world for this for the betterness of uh, eventually all of his children at that time uh, the Allah wants to to make uh, basic uh, resources to support Adam and the angels. It's, I have just created someone, this guy, he needs help. He needs ways to do it. So, so make sure that you stand on behalf of, uh, stand on the side of Adam to support him in his, in his mission. This is really the essence of when Allah says, Adam. We told the angels, please bow down to Adam. It's not in a worship. Allah Azza wa Jal does not order anyone to worship anyone but him. He is the creator. He is the one to be worshipped. So what is this order? This order is about really uh, uh, carrying the mission in, on earth to al-istikhlaf, which he called inni ja'iluka fil ardi khalifa. You are the one who is responsible for this earth, for this world that you are in, and you need help. You definitely need support and help in your way. This is absolutely enormous task. So he tells the angels, uh, bow down to this person, provide him with all the support he needs. And there comes one of the entities that existed at Iblis. And Iblis says, no way, I'm not going to do that. Why? Oh, because I am better than him. That comes that's the root of all this discrimination i'm better than you Abdullah, why better second, than you just on that thought look can somebody be better than someone you can you can be better on someone but you cannot be better than someone simply because you look different mm. You can be, you can be better. There are, there are be, just like in school, you, I mean, exams, you. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean you, if you're grading you people, we give somebody A, somebody B, somebody C, somebody exactly. D. It can be, and that's an effort, that's an achievement. There is certain achievement mm. that makes you more achiever in this, uh, in one regard. Uh, you excel in your job, that's, you, you make, uh, you are better in your uh working on your job you uh you excel uh, uh, you you excel I mean, yeah. so, so if so i if, is... how is that measured just because well i guess that's measured by skill not by discrimination that's what we're saying i mean right a skill is yeah, skill yeah. right and then then here comes the notion now if i'm when i said i am biased to my idea because my idea is say look i want to to view the world around me from the perspective that the fact that all of us as humans we are created by one uh, entity uh, who is Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, it happened that Allah says look I have uh, I am going to uh, judge the people and sort them out and rate their performance based on how much obedience they are to the rules and the laws that Allah Azza wa Jal established which he knows these are the ones that make the life of people much better, much nicer, uh, no discrimination, no racism, uh, no uh, killing for the sake of uh, getting your, your wealth uh, or invoking wars so that you can, just like today they invoke the war in Ukraine for the interest of the United States and NATO and Europe and everybody is saying, look, this fight is about Eastern Europe and the and the NATO. That's what Biden says. What the heck is this about? He says, in order for me to keep my power over NATO, I invoked and I support a war to kill already millions of people in the, in that war. This is crazy. This is ridiculous. Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't do that. He wants the people to excel in 
the way they respond to the rules and the laws of Allah Azza wa Jal. And what's the problem in that? The problem is that there was a guy, let me call him a guy, Iblis, who was part of the jinn, he's a shaitan, who says, no way I will do that because I am better than him. Uh, why didn't you bow down to what I have created with my own hand? Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Iblis says, oh, I'm better than him. أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار من من نار وخلقته من طين. You created me out of fire. He is created out of uh, out of mud. Uh, and then, then he vows. He says, I'm going to make your creatures, this man or the the children of Adam, fight one another, kill one another, uh, disobey you in all types of things, and and we'll see. Uh, that I, I, I will be able to do that. So this is, uh, now some people may not believe in that because they have not thought in the, in the uh, carefully about this whole life. But nevertheless, the scenario, scenario is there is an entity that makes the distinction between people based on, uh, on a look, based on who am I, who are you, not what I do or what you do. What, how much performance I make? Or, how about, how how about corruption, Abu Talha? How about corruption? Okay. Corruption is, is that part of being, uh, is it discrimination? Or is that so Corruption just... is a means. No, corruption is a behavior which is a means to achieve more. And to achieve more or to get more, more wealth than you are, or to stop you, to stop you from getting... Uh, uh, to a place that's co corruption for example uh, we are competing for jobs uh, me and you and then there is a guy somewhere who has the ability to give me or you the job somebody bribes him he gets let's say a few bucks that's a bribe or i tell him i will give you 10 percent of my salary if you uh, appoint me so that's corruption why is that corruption what does it do because that's a means a means that this person finds out that allows him to be in charge. So he'll be even, he will have uh, some power over me because he gave me the the, uh, the job and he, uh, he deprived you from the job. Uh, he gets uh, the corruption, he works with the World Bank somehow and then in order to create a certain uh, issue in a country that forces this country to get a loan internet from the IMF or the World Bank and eventually to to plunge this whole country in a mess that's corruption uh, why a person would be corruption that's because of the uh, the greed that came out from this uh, issue of the have and the have not uh, that's because of the concept that he or she has about the the need to to survive, the need to sustain power, the need to to be able to be on top of things so that no one can remove him from uh, from the job without performance. That's the issue. Without performance, look, if you have a good performance, you can sustain your job, your position. He says, "Oh man, this is a crazy world. Today I am excelling in my performance. Tomorrow." comes brother Shirazi, he is better than me, he will take over. So why, how can I stop you from becoming my competitor or the competitor who can take my my place? Or oh, I want to, now you go through what's called the, cor the corruption. You find all types of ways. I can label you. I can say, oh, this brother uh, doesn't deserve a job because uh, you know what? Between me and you, he's he looks different. He's not from our... He's not from our brand. He's not our brand. Stay, keep him away. Uh, he is uh, today. They, they they label you with type of organizations. Uh, you all belong to this organization X or Y. Keep him away. At least you keep him under investigation until the post gets filled. Mm. It may, of course, uh, nobody probably proves at some point that whether you belong to organization or not. But to keep you for a few days under uh, interrogation or investigation, the whole job is already filled. And who is filling the job? I am filling the job. 
So that's corruption is rooted in this issue of discrimination and this issue of greed and this issue of uh, I deserve more than you deserve. Why? Not because I can excel my performance. And that's what Allah Azza wa Jal, that's uh, when he says, Inna akramakum Allahi atqakum. The best, the most honorable among you is the one who has the highest taqwa. And what's the highest taqwa? Highest performance. And highest performance in what? Highest performance in uh, observing the rules and the laws created by the creator of mankind, not by groups. Now, why you will say, oh, that's you are discriminating between people who follow the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal and the people who follow the order of the shaitan. Yes, I am. I'm saying the orders of Allah Azza wa Jal should be followed and must be followed because he is the creator. He is the sustainer. And he's the one who gave me life. Iblis did not give me my life. Iblis gave, gave me hell. And he leads people to hell. I should not be following him. So my performance is based on my taqwa, which means how much I observe the rules of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's, the, that's what taqwa actually means. Taqwa, you have to observe what you are doing. Watch it. Sometimes you say, watch it. Watch what? Watch what? Watch your boss. Watch your wife. Watch your kid. Watch the fact that someone uh, who created you doesn't like this behavior or likes it. Whether your behavior towards your wife or your child or your neighbor or your uh, boss or your uh, Sheikh, people access who work to wealth, for you. Uh, uh, we were talking uh, just, you know, uh, uh, let me ask you a question, which is somebody else asked me and I just wanted to ask you on the show here. You know, we, we were talking about the power of a mustahid, uh, you know, somebody who can do istihad and the access to this person that he has to let's say uh, understanding of Arabic language understanding of the details of the grammar of Arabic language and all of that Sheikh I mean that's a very powerful position to be in as a mustahid how can can he go wrong uh, can, can discrimination occur there is it possible it's possible, it's rare, but it's possible uh, because I look at the uh, situations when the uh, ijtihad or mujtahideen or scholars were uh, rising in thousands or even tens of thousands at a time, uh, almost each and every one of them would always conclude his uh, ijtihad or his conclusion about a certain thought, he would say, this is my thought which i think it's correct but if you find something more correct then you should know that that is that i belong to that idea also so i'm not the final uh, judge on this idea uh, he would say my uh, opinion in this case i think it's valid but it can be wrong immediately that's a statement which is always done we, uh, our I ideas, think it's our right opinion, but it can be, it can be, it can be, it can be uh, a mistake. And if you find any reason uh, or any evidence to show that it is really a mistake, then please take that opinion and leave mine. And that's that's Imam Abu Hanifa's major statement. Uh, if you find a hadith that's sahih, that's correct hadith. From the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, فذلك مذهبي. That's my madhab. My madhab is not what I say. My madhab is what the truth. Now, today, of course, today we have totally different situations. Today we have people, so-called so-called scholars, quote unquote, who are trying to find the most suitable idea or thought that suits the one in power. Mm. Yes. Government. Subhanallah. I mean, I guess uh, I I, I so didn't think about it that way, but that's exactly what. And they claim themselves to be themselves to be uh, mustahideen and uh, access to all this kind of craziness. Yeah. And 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 uh, not only that, but they find someone who is in power who can give them that title. Mm. So these titles now are not earned. Mm -hmm. uh, Ijtihad is an earned issue. It's something. It's knowledge. So a knowledge has to be aimed. It has to be gained. You have to gain knowledge, you have to get it, you have to acquire knowledge. And to keep after knowledge and after sincere knowledge with evidences, because knowledge cannot be called knowledge, there is 
you can be educated, you can get information in your brain, but to for that knowledge to be knowledge, that information to be knowledge, you have to go after it and convert it into knowledge supported with proofs and evidences. Then it becomes knowledge. That's why today it's it's supposedly it's difficult to publish a paper with certain knowledge until it's investigated and people review it and give some comments and sometimes it's rejected. So it cannot be converted into a knowledge that can be spread around to the people in journals or in books. That's that's how it should be. But of course today there is corruption in this because you can pay money for someone, they can publish your garbage and it, uh, it's called uh, knowledge. And uh, in, in scholarly work uh, of Islam, not everybody who claims knowledge, he has knowledge. Knowledge has to be based on evidences. And once the evidence and there is an idea and the thought process that you go through to get knowledge, this is knowledge. Uh, and that process, which happened at the time of the Sahaba عليهم, and the Tabi'een and, 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 it has always been the case that say, look, I'm going after to convert a piece of information into a solid knowledge. But at any point of time, if you find any uh, evidence that goes against what I have said, please uh, discard everything that you have heard from me and convert it into, uh, uh, go to the real knowledge. And that's real Islam. Today, the way is different. The way is different. You have to be almost part of a certain governmental structure, state structure. You listen and to obey to some tyrants and try to, to justify their uh, tyranny or their uh, oppressive act. Then you become a scholar or a mujtahid. So these titles today, uh, there is a process that has been violated mm. about the process of becoming a mujtahid or becoming a scholar or becoming uh, someone who can listen to. If you have the best knowledge in the world today, how could you uh, propagate this knowledge? Today there are platforms, uh, media platforms, there is Al Jazeera, there is CNN, there are uh, platforms that go worldwide and in a split of a second they can make your statement known to everybody and they can meet you and make some type of reports or uh, like conferences with, with you and giving you the upper hand and the last word to say and then you become a hero of knowledge which you may be in the truth of the matter you have zero knowledge you have tons of information that you gather from different places and you start talking about them but this is how scholars are made today someone who is given the platform to talk on all of these uh, media platforms uh, sometimes you find someone who has uh, uh, on let's say on a facebook uh, within few days or few months he will have million followers and you get surprised how is it possible oh that's because he's famous no 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 what made him had all of these followers what is the mechanism there where you find out later on if you as or uh, Islamic oasis start getting more visibility, uh, at some point of time, your page will be blocked. And you'll say, our account has been closed. And you spend a week, two weeks, three weeks uh, struggling with Facebook to get another account. Sometimes your account, sometimes you can't. You open another account, you start all over again. And there are thousands. Look, they blocked Trump, President of the United States, the largest, he's, the number one in the world they blocked him for uh, from twitter from facebook from... <laughs> now how could it possibly possible that uh, his voice gets to the people now of course uh, he could have some garbage idea but let the people decide it's garbage idea make Sheikh, what, don't, yeah, uh, make, so, don't create zombies for us discrimination happens due to access to knowledge i mean if you close access to resources right i mean is that what we're saying here so discrimination one of the forms of discrimination is, is to create this uh, or or or, or yeah. uh, close yeah, you, access you to block, resources you i block your resources your access to resources or even if you have access to resources and you formulate knowledge i i block your access 
to the dissemination of this knowledge. Uh, during the eras when Islamic society was in existence, the knowledge and the people who have knowledge, they reported that in one masjid, like Masjid al-Umawi in, in, in Damascus, mm -hmm. there would be tens of sessions going in parallel by all knowledge seekers or knowledge providers. Nothing is closed. It's a masjid. You go to the masjid, you find you need a scholar from this uh, perspective, another scholar, a third one, you will find uh, all of these. And no one is blocked from having uh, a place in Al-Quds, in Al-Aqsa. Uh, last time, or the, the only time I had a chance to visit uh, uh, Al-Aqsa, someone showed me that is, this is a location where Taqid Din Nabhani was giving his session. And Taqid Din Nabhani was banned based on the country standards and the political standards. But in the masjid, if you disseminate knowledge, here is a place if people want to listen to you, they come to listen to you. You cannot block, you cannot block the dissemination of knowledge. You cannot block the access to the, to the resources of knowledge. Today in the world, in the world today, in the library of the uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, where I got my PhD, there is a section in the library where you cannot get access to papers or books or publications there. You need special permissions. And these are specific reports, political economic reports. They come. Uh, and if you have, if you know someone in the library, and that's corruption, you might be able to get to a certain report. And then within a couple of days, you make a publication and it becomes, wow, where did this guy get this public? I mean, it's absolutely a, a, a very uh, attractive, very strong publication because you were given access to certain reports, which are, they call them uh, uh, under scrutiny or uh, uh, confidential or uh, highly secure. They give them all types of, of names. But uh, why does, uh, uh, what's his name, the uh, Bob Woodward has access to this information. So when he publishes something, wow, it's, it's, I mean, of course he has the information. He has access to certain knowledge and therefore he can publish. I mean, this has a lot to do with how people can uh, succeed, right? Uh, or gain access to things that can give them upper hand. Uh, people can use access to that information and use it as blackmailing, uh, gain access in political uh, circles, groups, uh, money, wealth, all kinds of things. So you're saying, I mean, for instance, uh, University of Chicago, uh, even University of Chicago does the same thing and UI does the same thing. Is that by design? Of course. Of course, brother, uh, it's by design. But somebody Look, can say that's security people, also, isn't it? I'm, I'm just I'm throwing that out there. That's also security to keep uh, information Look, secure. Uh, uh, how many people can get uh, to go to uh, Harvard or to Brown University mm -hmm. uh, or to MIT? Uh, who can get there? To How many people can get there? Leave alone the knowledge that they have. Uh, when the uh, to become, let's say, a doctor, medical doctor, uh, coming graduating from uh, my clinic or from Harvard or from whatever, uh, you need not less than two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars within the six or seven years of your study. Uh, how many people who have access to that much money? Uh, there are certain privileges, certain places you cannot get access to unless you have already. You have gone into uh, a stream which is the most advantageous uh, stream of people, the most advantageous based on, on wealth. Uh, there are positions in the, in the army, uh, specific uh, positions being uh, top general in the army. Uh, you better be from, the, uh, uh, from a hierarchy of people who have uh, assumed this position. Uh, and that is, uh, that's a case uh, when they sometimes they say, oh, we need to inspect your background. Inspect what? What type of background that you are really looking at uh, other than my capabilities and abilities and my own uh, resources? 
now you find that oh you have not graduated from this school this is uh, you did not you cannot compete with someone coming from uh, MIT or Stanford or one of these top uh, higher ranking universities which become very lucrative so there is a, a way to block knowledge and uh, you say well you are graduating with a degree in civil engineering from any universities as good as anything else you are a bright uh, graduate not necessarily true because when you apply for a job to be in top paying job top position they look if you have come from Stanford or Berkeley or uh, Urbana-Champaign you will be preferred over someone who come from Northeastern Illinois University or uh, uh, North Northern University in DeKalb uh, or graduating from somewhere from uh, an unknown university you will not get that same uh, same post and if you are getting a, you are getting a job you are getting less paid so the one who has graduated from another place he will get more paid and if he is more paid then he has more power and that's what i have been saying all uh, the, all the way through uh, that uh, to to excel to be part of the system the the big elite you need to go through a certain path but that certain path you cannot get to and as i mentioned the university of mississippi in uh, oxford it prevented black people from going there and there was a time before that all universities were absolutely closed doors you cannot get there if you are a person of color and there was a time when there are certain positions will not be given to women that's why this, uh, this... Uh, just last question uh, last question Sheikh, you know, uh, there was a study that came out of University of Chicago. I forgot the name of it, but it was very interesting. Uh, that, uh, so let's say if they can, uh, at, the, at this in this study, the idea was that you, uh, let's say if, for, in, for instance, with blacks, uh, okay, so there is no resources. You have closed down all access to resource. They knew that this could create a problem. So what they did was they chose a small amount of uh blacks within the black community and then gave them access and then basically what happened was that whenever there would be any protest this small black community would turn around and tell the masses of blacks saying that no you need to stop protesting because even whatever access have been given to us will be blocked so <laughs> how do you work this out this is and someone is planning to make sure that by design that these type of disparities continue to occur i mean now between the blacks let's say you have a small group of blacks and elite blacks uh is that also i mean how does that work Sheikh? elite blacks against blacks well even elite uh, blacks i remember uh one interview with one of the top uh, actors uh, in the black community i'm not uh, very much into this uh, uh, positions one of the most famous uh, black Denzel actors. washington is one of them yeah no one of the uh, a little bit older guys uh, okay. anyway uh, was asked the question uh, uh, how do people look at you as uh, a black person? He said, if you are looking at me from front, so you know who am I, then you say, hey, hi, uh, I forgot his name, uh, very famous guy, very comedian, uh, one of the top comedian ones. Uh -huh. uh, and if you are looking at me and you didn't see my face, then someone is passing and say, look at this. He says, I am... Uh, if I, if they don't know me, then I am a high such and such person, and then people want to take my uh, autograph uh, if they know uh, my position. So what this means is, is the even when the black persons they say, look, still things are blocked, uh, and then one of you become become elite part of the elite. It's a big position, high position. Uh, like uh, uh, 
anyone in pop uh, like the defense minister of the United States uh, these days. He's a he's a minister. Yeah, uh, yeah. and he's of uh, black. Those things usually today they are allowed just to make the the uh, to make a statement that look. Not every black person is uh, discriminated against. This guy is an excellent general, so he can he deserves to be. But the question is, how many of these had the right or the access to the right resources to become an excellent general, or even to get in the uh, in the uh, in the line of becoming general in the first place? Mm. And then you look at the the majority uh, is really. Uh, there's big discriminatory actions, even in the gender issue, the, the women. Uh, women are very deprived. And w- what kills me, really, it makes me absolutely mad when you tell me that women are minority, when their number in the society is larger than men. <laughs> what is this minority issue? Or well, because they are uh, less privileged. Who made them less privileged? It is like the Jahiliya of Mecca, when they used to kill the daughters when they are born. That means they are less privi- privileged because uh, the, somebody deprived them the right to live in the first place. So now you are telling me this is a minority. You are telling me I am a minority because I look different. And you sign sometimes. They give you that piece of paper and you put your race. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, sometimes they make you fight for a status of minority. Yeah, because benefits. you can open a certain benefits and mostly these benefits they are really meant to keep you down yeah. you know, the benefits you, benefits you get as a minority it means that at some point of time why should i work why should i excel as a minority i get cer- certain food stamps or certain social status so i better stay at the status so all of this is designed that's not that's not random it's not random it's not just happened that the number of people, number of women in high level positions is very few. You give me Hillary Clinton once in a while. How many Hillary Clintons you have in the United States? Mm, even that's really, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then doctors, you will find me a, a doctor, very brilliant doctor at the uh, uh, Cook County Hospital who has, happens to be a black or a woman or something. How many of them are there? Percentage wise, because you you would say, well, the number of people who are white or different color is very large. Okay, let's take ratios. If I am 20% of the uh, of the nation is of my type, which you call me a a black or which is really very uh, uh, demeaning uh, name, or you uh, give me a title with even my ethnicity, say, oh, I want to uh, uh, raise your level a little bit. You are no longer called the black. You are African American, but that's even yet more discriminatory. I'm a human being. I'm a human being. Why didn't you t- talk about that guy who is coming from German? Says from German origin, or he's an Irish origin, European Irish, you, uh, Irish American. Why don't you call these Irish American, German American, uh, Anglo-Saxon American? But you are telling me African American. Indian origin or in Middle Eastern. This is absolutely ridiculous. That's even, it's in the law. It's in the law. It's not something. And then you find that, as I said, one of them is excellent. The ratio of the people, uh, of the guys who have who are doctors at hospitals is not commensurate with the with the, with their real ratios in the in life. Whereas if you go to jail, to the GL, you'll find the ratio of the people of color. So they call them people of color, which is again, it's really ridiculous because you, the, the white is not a person of color. He doesn't have a color. He has a white color. Why don't you say the whites? So even all of these terms are very ugly. Sometimes we use them because they have become part of the terms. So you go to the jail, you will find more than 70% of the inmates are from the 20% of the population. Why? So all of these, these issues, again, look, the, my conclusion will be the main reason for this racism, discrimination by all means, is 
is the the protest the protest actual protest against the laws and the systems that Allah had created for the humans Allah created the humans equal Allah wanted the humans all to compete on their own merits on the performance Allah wanted these humans to live in decent life Allah made systems he gave systems not only objectives sometimes I uh, uh, allow me to say this United Nations the FAO organization about food etc poverty they vowed that by 2020 that was 10 uh, in 2010 they said by 2020 poverty rate will go about 50 percent mm. we reduce the poverty by 50 percent well 2020 they found that the poverty rate was more than the one it was in 2010 anyway they have objectives good goals nice uh, give them big hand nice guys I mean you're but did you provide me a system that get you there Allah Azza wa Jal provided the humans a system that if you use it the wealth distribution would be absolutely perfect no one will be left behind no one will be uh, uh, dealt with based on the way he looks and the color etc Allah Azza wa Jal after all he said that the variance in your colors is one of the signs of the the, crea the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he made out of the people from the same origin, same genetic origin, you could have uh, thousands of different colors or uh, in fact, in fact, by the colors, uh, I'm as a technologist, there is no person who is similar, whose color is similar to the other person. Absolutely not. All colors, every person has his own color. It's not a nation because colors are really frequencies based on frequencies absorbed and reflected from the light that comes to your face or to your body. And these frequencies, each and every one of person has his own receiver capacity to receive frequency or reject it. This is for people who know the technology and the science. So when we say there are blacks or whites or reds or whatever, no two persons have identical colors. No two persons have identical voice. Absolutely not. So Allah Azza wa Jal did not make uh, uh, colors uh, as a racial barrier because he gave each and every person his own color. I am not the same color as my son or even my father or my brother. We, are, we have different colors. So let's settle this down. Allah Azza wa Jal gave a system give systems and laws and regulations follow them you'll be in absolutely perfect shape get distracted distracted a little bit from that you will be in the worst possible case you may start on uh, the initial spot you start with could have been uh, nice but over time you will deviate miles and miles and miles away from the real good systems so the essence of all the all racial aspects is the uh, uh, skipping or stepping aside from the laws and the regulations revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal. And today the major problem humanity faces is how do we get back to the path Allah Azza wa Jal drew, drew for us through all the line of messengers he sent to humans starting from Adam going through Nuh alayhi salam through Hud through uh, Isa through Musa until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he finalized his message. He wrapped it up in a very nice manner in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There sits the solutions. Anything else will not work. No matter how much you fight against racism, discrimination, until and unless you have a system, complete system, judicial system, that's not, I mean, judicial system, look, I could go for long time but I, I know to go that to my I know that lecture. but here's the thing so let's yeah. <laughs> the judicial system today two same persons go to the same court the same judge yeah. but with two different discriminatory lines one of them will get let's say either uh, maybe one year with suspended uh, uh, implementation and the other guy will get 10 years in prison yeah why yeah. because this guy belongs to a certain group or title and the other one goes to another one same people same court same ju uh, what do you call them the, the jurisdictions or uh, 
the body, the people who come and vote for what do you call the jury. jury. Same jury, same thing. They 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 pass a judgment to you different than the one to to me. The same crime, same conditions, and this is the the literature is full about these cases. Go back to Islam. Let the world be. If the world wants to live without discrimination in a decent societies, get back to Islam. If you cannot be a Muslim yourself, you don't want to be. No one can force you, but at least allow the system of Islam to prevail. Allow these systems to prevail and rule the people. That's where where the the, the issue comes in. Uh, inshallah, brothers and sisters, with that, uh, we're going to end uh, this program. Uh, but there were many points that were made here. Uh, there are certain things that when you leave it to human beings, we will be in that same circular position, which is we are constantly facing discrimination, racism. We are facing all kinds of uh, problems that are emanating from, uh, obviously, a designed structure, a system that continues to uh, create have and have nots, creates elites that you talked about, trillions of dollars, a person who can spend it for 200 50 some thousand years and uh, 250 years whatever the numbers are and imagine a million dollars a day while people are trying to figure out how they can get access to just a piece of bread uh, wars are being created in the name of interests of certain governments in certain countries and millions of people are just dying to fulfill the interest of few elite uh, if that's not discrimination then what is uh, and of course Dr. Butalha ended with uh, with the fact that only Islam, uh, because it is revealed by the Creator who created human beings, who revealed the book, uh, and once once we rule by that book, then this idea, uh, that this this uh, discrimination or racism can only be erased that way. Inshallah, brothers and sisters, with uh, with that thought, uh, we'll meet with you. Inshallah, next Juma again. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi taala barakatuh. لن يطول الظلام ديننا لن يضام نحن جيل هما نحن فينا عمر لا 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 لن يطول الظلام ديننا لن يضام نحن جيل هما نحن فينا عمر صبح بدا نور ظهر نجم وشمس وقمر ألقى على الدنيا الدرر هذا عمر هذا عمر كل البرايا تنتظر أيامه البيض الغرر كي تستفيد من العبر هذا عمر هذا عمر لا لن تدوم الجراح بل سيأتي الصباح نحن أهل الكفاح نحن فينا عمر لا لا لن تدوم الجراح بل سيأتي الصباح نحن أهل الكفاح